Microclots are one of those things that people often just associate with long COVID and long COVID symptoms. And there is no doubt there is something very unique and unusual about microclotting that primarily affects the long COVID cohort. Now, there are some people who don't even believe that long COVID exists. That's a whole different conversation. But just trust me for the moment that there are a lot of people who are quite unwell and they are struggling with symptoms, especially with regards to fatigue and so on, that they don't quite or we don't fully understand all of the characteristics for. One thing is for certain, it's definitely connected with the spike protein. We are just not clear as to exactly how this works. And as part of the preparation as to why I'm talking about this is that I am making reference to the fact that coming up very shortly is our spike detox. Does everyone need one? It's a presentation that I'm putting together. And I'm asking the question because it's not really something that I've been focused on. So if you're interested in it, please click on the link in the description and join me uh, in the next few days. If you've missed it, there will be a link to it afterwards. But the question is, what is going on in terms of the impact the spike protein is having on health? And are there any ways, innovative strategies we can use to identify who is affected and critically find ways to address these problems? That's essentially what I'm focused on. And it really is part of that whole research focus that even though inconvenient, a lot of you may not know this, but my content is suppressed maybe 95% on YouTube simply because they don't like this conversation. They really get upset with it because it raises questions about what has been going on. So if you happen to be on YouTube, I'd be very interested to know if in the bottom right corner, you can see a subscribe button. If you can see it and you haven't yet subscribed, I'd be curious to know if you can even still subscribe. This is how severe the censorship has become. But anyway, let's get and stick to the science for the time being, because this is quite important. And this will be raised in more detail when I do the presentation. So if you are interested in it, please make sure to register. Here are just a few pointers, though. What we know is that spike protein here seems to be circulating in the bloodstream for very long periods of time. And it can happen in both vaccinated and unvaccinated cohorts, but it does seem to be more of a problem in the vaccinated cohort. A very important point, because I don't want people to presume that this isn't necessarily an, an issue for them. And I'll tell you why I think that this is important. Follow along here. When we talk about clots or even microclots, this is what a normal clot would look like. When you damage a blood vessel and there's blood leaking out, it tends to make this clot. And you have here red blood cells. These strands are fibrin. And then you have platelets that hold the whole thing together. And this clot is normal. But what seems to be happening, and this is my creation, is that this combination of this fibrin clot now gets connected with lots of little pieces of spike protein. And this is a completely different kind of clot. And it may still be quite small, but it's very difficult for the bloodstream or the, um, the coagulation system to break it down. This is part of the problem. And I've gotten this image here from um, its RTHM clinic. And um, they've used a beautiful image here of what would look like is one of these microclots here blocking a small blood vessel. There is still some blood that is able to get around it, but to the area that's supplied, it restricts the blood flow and the blood supply. And it could explain why some people have some of these unusual symptoms, whether or not it's brain fog, whether or not it's muscle aches and fatigue. Because if you imagine using the muscles and you have lots of little microclots like that, blocking blood flow, it means that whenever you exert yourself, you are not likely to improve your symptoms and there'll be poor recovery after you have done any exertion, which is what happens to a lot of people. 
But here is the bit that I think really people underestimate. Who is affected and how much so? When you look at this image here, this is from uh, examples of microclots in the blood. And what they had done in this paper, they had stained it looking for amyloid characteristics. And these are all from different people's bloods, different kinds of clots that they were seeing all throughout it. And this is significant because some of these clots are quite big. And so they will do damage in terms of blocking blood vessels and it won't cause a heart attack or a stroke this is the point is that there is enough capillary blood supply around it that it won't do that kind of impact but it will restrict blood flow and therefore impact symptoms and how people feel really complex stuff and this is from that same paper prevalence of symptoms of comorbidities of fibrin amyloid microclots and platelet pathology this is really critical. But again, because everybody sees this term of long COVID, they think that it's not relevant to them. Here's an interesting thing from the paper. I've just highlighted this here. They, they did a, a study on another cohort of 80 patients who had visited the clinical practice, just complaining of per persistent symptoms. Some may have had the diagnosis. And they found in that cohort all of the patients had increased amyloid microclotting as well as platelet pathologies, all of them. And when I spoke uh, with Dr. Robin recently, she was highlighting that in reality, a lot of people who don't even think that they have problems, when you check and screen for microclotting, they have it present. This is pretty serious. And it raises a question as to, how do we identify who has it and how do we get rid of it? And again, I'll show you here the normal versus the spike fibrin clot. And listen, this I am beginning to think that in order to have the embalmers clots that I talk about, you probably need to have this in the background in the first place. Because when you look at the embalmer's clots here, and this is a huge clot filling the inferior uh, vena cava, you can see this is the normal red clot. These are these white clots that will be mainly platelets and fibrin and amyloid and hemoglobin, all kinds of things stuck in them. That they, This is what makes them hard, um, white and rubbery. And these clots here could be an amalgamation of microclotting in a specific event. And this is where I look at the fact that I suspect that the embalmer's clots are occurring in cohorts where there is quite severe inflammation on top of already pre-existent microclots. This is quite significant. And this is where I, I think the thing I like about having to do these presentations here is that it forces me to really think about the science how to try and break it down to make sense of it and trying to find solutions. So we are right at the cutting edge, the forefront, even though we're talking about this, of trying to find solutions for the health issues that are around us. There is no doubt that we're facing a massive health crisis over the next few years. But as I said, this is more like a storm surge. People are only now starting to notice that we have more flu. COVID seems to have dropped in the background, but it's really because people are not screening for it and the symptoms are so, so subtle. It's still there. It's still circulating and it's causing all kinds of health issues to occur in people around us. Our challenge is to find out who these people are and to work out how we can address it. Look forward to seeing you. And remember, if you can see the subscribe button, just for my curiosity, please click on it. If you can't even see it, if you've never subscribed, please just tell me. That's quite useful to know as the ongoing censorship continues in different ways, shapes, and forms. Have a great evening, and we'll bring you more up-to-date science in the near future.